Good morning, folks. We'll check in on the sun, earth weather, eight top science articles for the day, and you're watching the bright active region crest onto the earth-facing half of the sun. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and begin with the last 24 hours on our star. Coronal hole up north dominating the polar region, leading the way out ahead of the active region, and it is going to deliver slightly intensified solar wind streams to earth towards the end of the weekend into the weekend. Right now, the solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are very quiet. The active region up top there has slightly intensified the X-ray production, but appears to be in decay. It was born on the far side, it did unleash two small CMEs, but perhaps that's all she's got in her so early here in the cycle. Or perhaps she just got shy when she caught a glimpse of Earth. Let's head to Mumbai where a ridiculous rainfall happened very quickly. One of the important metro regions of the country is underwater today. We also have seen that cold front finally make its way to the eastern side of the U.S. It began over the weekend, but the cold records have begun to fall on this side of the country and continue now into the week. Last week, it was a brutal shock for the West as some went from 90s to snow in one day. Folks, a sad story up next in our usual pipeline. Dozens of whales stranded in Tasmania, and actually the story was updated overnight. Make that hundreds. It's the worst stranding in the country's history, and folks, these creatures are swirling in the most magnetically powerful waters on Earth. The South Magnetic Pole has already left Antarctica in its ongoing shift and is just southwest of the country. It has now matured peer-reviewed science that geomagnetic issues can affect whale strandings. Veterans might remember NASA's initial question in 2012, wrapped up earlier this year in February with a seminal publication. But what they failed to mention was that those issues can arise from both solar storms and Earth's changing magnetic field. There were no solar storms this week. That puts into question whether something happened in the other way to trigger this. Up next, we're going to Chandra, and as I go through the different light wavelengths here for their cover image, know that this release is not about visual splendor. This one is about sound. In a process called sonification, they are taking light data and transforming it into music. They have a number of popular space features that they have sonified, and all at the link to the Chandra sounds in today's resource links below the video. Sticking with space with a stop by to find a summary of the TESS-1300. 1300 new periodic signals in the first year of TESS operation, many of them newly discovered exoplanets, an FYI. The actual exact number was 1,333. Up next, we're checking out simulations of planetary molding of a debris disk in a young system. To explain the disks around a number of stars just starting up their lives, they require more than the close-in exoplanet they know is there. By modeling unseen, further out planets at various distances, they are starting to get a grip on the observational data. Most stars should have multiple planets provided the system doesn't undergo some early disaster. Let's come back to Earth for some more in the climate realm. First one is pretty simple. The oceans are capturing more carbon than they believed. This is primarily due to the in-situ measurement occurring at a few meters down, while remote sensing satellites can focus on just the surface waters. Interesting that this is a weird case where the flaws come when they are hands-on in the muck. Either way, the oceans are better at this than we thought, and at keeping it down there. And from the ocean to the forest, a new study shows how the edges of the forest, where climate change should be attacking first, are actually quite resilient provided Antifa isn't setting them on fire. And that is exemplified by the expanse of the Arctic, going greener, and just like the oceans, sucking up much more carbon with every inch of white they take over with green. And last but not least, we circle back again to the ocean tipping points. If the title of this one doesn't give it away, they are noticing limit cycles, tipping points to cascades, including the Little Ice Age. And they indeed identify the Greenland Ice Sheet and AMOC, the overturning circulation in the Atlantic. Sound familiar? This makes for an identification of exactly what we've seen in other recent works, and serves as the spillway for the actual observable events ongoing at the polar region today got to be both sharp and a regular viewer to catch the importance of that last one. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.